Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, friends, family, and so many well-wishers. Let's begin this virtual meeting with all of us standing up for a minute's silence in respect for this giant of a human being called Fakir Chand Kohli. Thank you. I have been tasked to bid farewell to a colossus, Fakir Chand Kohli, founder of TCS, father of the Indian software industry, a human man mountain. Foremost, as I have learned over the past several years, a beloved husband, a titan of a father, a gentle father-in-law and a grandfather who was guru, friend and path giver. A little known fact about Mr. F.C. Kohli is that he had applied to join the Royal Indian Navy and he was selected as a sub-lieutenant. It seemed his life had come up track and who knows he may have well retired as the Admiral of the Indian Navy. After graduation, Mr. Kohli joined General Electric in Toronto and then enrolled himself at MIT for a Master's in Power Engineering. As he stretched his mind, his family underwent the trauma of partition and migration. In later years, he carried the burden of the knowledge that his family had continued to finance his education even after losing everything and he had to restart his life almost from scratch. Power sector digitization, thanks to FC Kohli, was ahead of even Japan, UK, France and Germany who were analog at that time. Even the United States had digitized only load dispatch functions. He introduced a concept of islanding. This means if one grid failed, that part of the city would be isolated and the rest of the city would function without a hitch. Even New York and other major cities of the West introduced this concept of islanding several years or perhaps decades later. India has no business being poor. He would say this in his typical matter-of-fact way. India is a tremendous source of people who are all very bright. Why aren't we at the top of the world? Almost 20% of companies globally in the information technology sector are being run by Indians. Hear it from the eldest of the siblings, Madhul Kohli. We're gathered here today to commemorate my father, Dr. Fakir Chand Kohli. In the next hour or so, you'll hear of his contributions to industry and uh, civil society, as well as his life as a family man. I would like to set the context for what follows by characterizing his essence. His credo was, Choose to do that which will better humanity. Once chosen, do it with excellence to the limit of your ability. Do it with honesty and humility. That credo was the greatest gift he gave me. He never articulated it explicitly, but embodied it in his actions. I learned not by advice and lessons, but by observation. That was his mode of operation. He led by example. He opened doors and encouraged you to walk through. Many of my current interests and passions were formed as, in that way as a child. For example, my love of mathematics was not only because we did mathematics together, but because he communicated his love of the elegance of math. My passion for reading was not only because he was a voracious reader, but because we went to libraries every Saturday 
so I could discover books at my level. Another door he opened for me led to my lifelong career as a computer scientist. I was home in the summer of 1975 between college sessions. One day Papa mentioned that TCS was going to start a training session for new hires and would I be interested in attending. I accepted and never looked back. That changed my life. I never fully realized the value of the gift he had given me until I worked with people for whom good enough was acceptable and for whom the purpose behind what they did was unknown or unimportant. There are many memories and gifts I have from Papa, but his credo is the one that defines my life. Thank you, Papa. A message from the former Prime Minister, Mr. Manmohan Singh. I am saddened to read about the demise of Sri Fakir Chand Kohli. He lived a full life with enormous contribution to the information technology industry of our nation. Mr. Kohli was a visionary, a brilliant technocrat, and a fatherly figure for the Indian IT industry. He foresaw the opportunity of the IT industry for India decades ago, when the technology sector was almost non-existent in India. His leadership and passion were key to establishing the Indian IT industry as a leading, trustworthy and quality partner for global corporations. Mr. Kohli was a firm believer in the power of technology and its applicability for social good as well as the capability building of our youth, which was his passion. He led innovations in areas far ranging from adult literacy, water purification, software engineering, software automation, complex systems and cybernetics. He propagated the importance of technology adoption for India and stressed on the importance of use of multiple Indian languages for both the software and hardware industry in India. He believed that multiple language competencies for the Indian IT industry would be a game changer for the future. Mr. Kohli also believed in building our nation's human capability using technology in diverse areas such as education, health, agriculture and teacher training. He firmly believed in education for the masses and thus developed the adult literacy program. He always encouraged the teachers and professors in engineering colleges to upgrade their knowledge to keep that base up and keeping with the changes of technology was bringing it to the industry. A vision that is still being upheld by TCS with its employees. He believed that a young graduate armed with the latest knowledge of the tech world would be more job ready and subsequently be able to deliver well at his job too. Throughout his career, the visionary leader always maintained close ties with academics, including being a visiting faculty in some of the leading engineering colleges of India, namely VGTI in Mumbai and the University of Roorkee, that is IIT Roorkee now. Mr. F.C. Kohli was also instrumental in establishing IITs in Mumbai and Kanpur. Having lived his life with the Tata Group and leading Tata Consultancy Services for 28 years, Mr. Kohli laid the foundation for the $100 billion industry for IT in India. Despite his momentous achievements, his simplicity and thoughtfulness are a lesson for all its all. His enduring optimism and his ability to foresee the future leaves behind a legacy that has helped us all grow. I would like to convey my sincere condolences to his wife and the family. 
Mr. Manmohan Singh, former Prime Minister of India. The Chairman Emeritus, Tata Sons, Ratan N. Tata. It has been a sad day. We have lost a giant of a person in Mr. Kuli, who sadly passed away a few days ago. Mr. Kuli has been and can easily be called the father of the IT industry in the country. He formed and led TCS uh, as, as a small data conversion unit into the, the giant that it is today. TCS has been accepted as as the foremost IT company in India and recognized all over the world. A lot of the uh, early tribute to that goes to Mr. Kohli who ran the operation very firmly and resolutely in the early days. Despite Mr. Kohli's uh, recognition and uh, and his goals that he said behind behind this he was on the face of it quite a serious person seemingly unfriendly seemingly uh, never smiling but actually a person who is soft considerate, uh, understanding, and had goals for India in that he wanted to have a lit literate community and to use technology to make this happen. So it, while it's a sad day to think Oh, Mr. Kohli is not being there anymore. One can look back and say he did a great service with the IT industry and great service with the Tata Group in moving TCS from a small company into what it is today. We thank Mr. Kohli for what he has done and remember him for what he has created. We condole his family and for the low key and no fuss environment that they created. May he rest in peace. And now, N. Chandrasekharan, Chairman, Tata Sons. I distinctly remember walking into Mr. Kohli's room to be interviewed 
for a job in TCS. I was doing my intern in TCS in 1986. Two months into the internship, I was offered a job, but only after Mr. Kohli interviewed me. I distinctly remember he telling me, Rao likes you and recommends you highly, so we are going to give you a job, but you have a responsibility. If you do well, we will take more people from your institute. Since then on, I had lots of opportunities to interact with him and learn from him over the years. Mr. Kohli is a legend. There are many things about him to admire. He had an amazing clarity of thought and a tremendous conviction in anything he set out to do. In those days, he recognized that the market was in the West and he constantly toured and visited companies in the United States, UK, Europe and other markets, but only to be told by many firms that this can't be done. But Mr. Kohli believed that the software services can be industrialized with the right set of processes. He had a strong belief and conviction in the talent potential that India had. So he worked very closely with academic institutions in building up the engineering talent and over invested in training and also did a lot to build software tools and create a research and development organization. Many of the software tools that he invested in those days are still being used very actively in TCS. Mr. Kohli's contribution to software industry and he laying the foundation for India's IT industry has been spoken about a lot. But that apart, he also was a great builder of people and built many people who went on to lead other companies very successfully. Mr. Kohli felt passionately about solving India's problems and the complexity of our country and the size that we have. He felt required a technology to solve any of these problems. Even recently, in any number of times I have met him, he has always debated about either building a software a hardware industry or solving problems through technology either in the judiciary or agricultural productivity and many other facets. Mr. Kohli has contributed immensely to Tata Sons and across the Tata Group and also to the nation at large in very many ways. He has written so many papers on bringing technology to solve different problems, many of which are things to be done. His dreams and his passion will continue to inspire all of us. We will miss him in the Tata group. Message from Mr. Noshir A. Sunawala. Mr. Fakir Chand Kohli was truly a visionary and an entrepreneur. Well before anyone else in India, he foresaw the power of the computer as a tool for improving the way many aspects of business and industry were being run. And he pushed ahead with his ideas despite skepticism from many sources and even opposition from some. In the early days when TCS was known as the computer division of Tata Sons, Mr. Kohli got support from the then chairman of Tata Sons, the legendary Mr. J.R.D. Tata, 
and inspiring visionary. This initial support was all that Mr. Kohli needed to push ahead and expand DCS's software exports to increasing levels consistently year after year after year and providing Tata Sons with increasing profits and cash flow which helped Tata Sons other activities as well as its value. Mr. Kohli was also a leader and a motivator with so many ideas that even after his formal retirement he continued to push for their implementation in the areas of vernacular applications and the use of technology in education even for those who were illiterate. Tatars and the country owe Mr. Kohli a great debt of gratitude. And while others have emulated his example, as the saying goes, they don't make them like him anymore. I have been fortunate to have interacted with him for many years, starting with the early difficult days, and to see him and TCS go from height to height to height. I can visualize him now lecturing to the angels about the merits of computer technology. Noshir A. Sonawala. Let's hear it from Mr. S. Ramadurai, who worked with Mr. Kohli the longest. We heard about the sad demise of Mr. F. C. Kohli on Thursday last. It was initially a state of shock for me and the family. But then a man who has lived for 96 years, absolutely fit till the last minute, remembering him is more apt. He made a difference to a lot of people. The last I met him was on the 8th of March where he had come to our place in Khandala along with his wife for a music concert. For a person to make and take all the trouble to come there and stay, stay through the entire performance followed by the lunch and meeting and greeting everyone and more importantly telling about us and the family was exactly the person I have known him for the last 48 years. Before that, Mala and I had gone to Alibag and met him there and he and Swaran Kohli were showing us around the garden and he was again reminiscing the time we spent together and this was the interaction every time, any time, any place with a man whom we are remembering today. Think what is it that he taught us? I don't want to go into the achievements from an IT professional, czar of IT, father of IT, which are all absolutely right. But I have written about those and said what I wanted to say professionally. Having known him from day one, since 1972, for almost 48 years plus, and having closely traveled with him all over the world, interacting with him almost on a daily basis, running this and creating this Colossus organization, which the entire world is proud of, Tatas are proud of, the nation is proud of, is something I just wanted to talk about a few things as anecdotes. Initially, the values he taught us were in terms of learning, inculcating reading habits, more importantly sharing those what you read with others and caring and nurturing every single professional he interacted with. And this value system has stayed with us and stayed with me right through. I think he was a person who said that as a professional, each of us owe to the profession 
each of us must learn everything we have learnt and share it for common good. That's how he said IEEE as an organization and being, being members of that, whether it was student membership or professional memberships or any other senior memberships he encouraged. More importantly, by participating in some of the local activities of the local chapters. When we travel together, and there are numerous occasions which we travel together across the world, the interactions were with regard to what each of us have read, what each of us have learnt, and what each of us have shared, and what we must share to build an institution. And the institution building was not easy because of the restrictive policies in the country with regard to the whole Tata group entering into a new space which they were known for but the skeptics were always there but we faced every single one of those challenges and situations and the can-do attitude took shape where we are not going to give up in something which we believe in. And that's the history where today the industry is almost $190 billion. But more importantly, the kind of human capital we have created for the nation, the jobs we have created for the nation. He was a man who could talk on any subject, forget about technology, forget about engineering, and when we used to discuss about the architecture, the kind of campuses we have built, whether it was in Chennai at Cholinganalur, whether it was at uh, Noida, whether it was at uh, Gurgaon, or the Hadapsar campus at Pune, each of them had a unique learning experience. That's the reason I'm mentioning these. Because involving a foreign architect with the best capabilities and bringing in local architects for the learning potential of it was always his constant search. Which we are very, very thankful to him, we are very proud of him. And very few people know these things, why he did what he did. And that's what I wanted to communicate here. There were a lot of uh, naysayers who felt because of a person who had minimal communication but maximum impact that they didn't understand what he was trying to communicate or what he was trying to say and what it meant. But he was a person who would go through letters, handwritten, repeated drafts, throwing back at you, throwing more challenges till we got it perfect because the recipient must understand what we are trying to communicate rather than flurry language and that was not the intent because we had to communicate the right way you can communicate in a written form you can communicate orally but here was a man with a beautiful handwriting and at least words he could communicate absolutely clearly and some of us understood a lot of people try to tell me how are you interacting with him where it's a very difficult person to deal with? But I think for me, every learning came from the interactions. Every minute you wanted to cherish it and you found reasons to meet him than moving away from him. I think human side of the man is what I want to cover next. Where when we imported the first Burroughs computer in 1974, it was a Burroughs 1728 system far ahead of any computer this country has seen. It was the second machine out of the production facility in California. The machine had a lot of snags. The machine would keep me busy as a field engineer virtually 24 hours at the Air India building on the 10th floor. But here was a man who at about 11.30 in the night would be reading the manuals and coming there and telling us, is there any way I can help you? I'm sorry you had to spend this time, but I'm with you. And I would want you to remember that, that I'm, av I'm available any time. His concern for our families, whether it was my wife or my son, he would even tell them, your father is working hard. 
And once my son also asked him, why are you making my father so hard? He says, all of us are trying to build something and I'm sorry, but that's the way we built and that's the man we are seeing. When we went to the US, in addition to all the learnings, he wanted to know anything about luggage. He wanted to know anything about opticians. He wanted to know anything about golf clubs. He wanted to know anything about Barnes and Noble and the books or he wanted to know anything about the professional society, here was a man who could advise you, who would give you the tips and who would engage with you. I think we had some extremely good moments. Some of the funny moments were when he and Palkiwala traveled from London to New York by Concord, I received them and they reached in three hours. From there, we had to go to Washington, so going from JFK to LaGuardia, but then waiting for three hours at the LaGuardia airport for the next flight made him a lot nervous. How do you handle Mr. Palkiwala who is measuring minute by minute? He says, please somehow handle him because we have to wait here for three hours. But knowing both of them, they could accept anything and rest is history as we say. I think is striving for excellence and raising the bar and teaching us to raise the bar all the time is what he should be known for and he has left an impact on me personally, my family, their family where all the family members are absolutely close to us and we will always remember him for all the great things he did for this nation, for his family, for all the professionals and for the society at large. He will be remembered right through and we must carry some of the value systems I talked about. This is absolutely critical to remember that man. I am sure he lives behind a legacy. He will be watching us and we are proud and I am personally proud of having worked with such a man and had an influence right through my life. Thank you so much. Aran Mahendra, Chairman Mahendras. The word fakir means an ascetic, someone who is alone, someone who doesn't have many material desires or wants, someone who is engaged in an almost otherworldly mission. When Mr. Kohli's parents gave him his name at birth, they obviously had no clue what destiny lay ahead of him. But I think they were clairvoyant. They knew that this child was meant for things of a much higher order. When I look back on my interactions with Mr. Kohli, I do indeed remember a very simple, humble, unassuming man. Someone who focused on his mission or missions, always shunned the spotlight. In fact, flamboyance was not a word that was in his dictionary. When he created Tata Consultancy, now at its inception it did require some kind of otherworldly thinking, some out-of-the-box thinking. And Mr. Kohli brought outrageous ambition and audacity to building it. By building it, he built the foundations of the entire Indian IT industry of which we are so proud today. He also created the bedrock of India's largest and most reputable business house. For that alone, he is an icon. But I think we would not do justice to his memory if we didn't remember his other missions. His untiring efforts, for example, to expedite and enhance literacy. All the enormous work he did towards making Indian agricultural productivity world class. In an ironic sense, for a man who was otherworldly, his real and ultimate mission was to make the world a better place. Now I pray that his soul is at peace in the heavens where he is. But knowing him, I think he's still a man on a mission. I think he's still working hard to make even the heavens a better place. Deepak Parekh, Chairman, HDFC. I have few words to demonstrate the loss I feel with Mr. F.C. Kohli's passing. It's a loss the entire digital universe must share. 
I returned to India in 1970 after a long study career overseas. And Mr. Kohli was the first person I met. He was known to my parents and as a prominent entrepreneur, even then, I was urged to gain some insights about the Indian IT industry from him. I distinctly remember his words, which went something like this. Son, he said, it is time for you to gather your resources and start a small IT business of your own. India is on the anvil of change and the bold and daring will own a piece of it. This was 50 years ago, talking of 1970. However, being from a professional base where generations of my family were not self-employed, I veered towards a career in banking and finance. FC, as he was fondly known, pioneered the internet age, the digital revolution, and birthed the concept of back office professionalism. Tata Consultancy Services was both the sky and the horizon of this new age that emerged. His dedication and devout service for decades will go down in history as legend. Truly an epic effort that we revere and salute today. Gentle of spirit and kind of demeanor, FC was the epitome of making the unthinkable happen. His family will bear me out when I say that rare is such humility in one so lofty a personality. A few months ago, I met him quite by chance. He took me aside, patted me on my shoulder and told me that I should give more than a cursory look into a new application developed at TCS that would add immense value to how companies like HDFC conducted its routine practices. At virtually the sunset years of his life, he breathed technology. He savored innovation and he shared the pearls of knowledge to enhance the scope of productivity. I bow in salute. I pay homage to his life. I hope that many emulate his principles. India pays tribute to his sagacity. The world is richer because he strode this universe. I pray he rest in eternal peace. Jairam Ramesh, Member of Parliament. Privileged to uh, have been asked to say a few words uh, in memory of Mr. F.C. Kohli. Um, it was in the late 60s and 70s that I grew up in the IIT Bombay campus. I went to school, I went to college there. Uh, and Mr. Kohli was a very well-known name on campus. That was the time when TCS was coming into its own computerization was very much in the air. Of course, the media headlines were uh, about the opposition to the computerization, but there were also news about how India is entering the computerization age. And Mr. Kohli was playing a very important role in that. And the director of IIT Bombay, who also happened to be a very close friend of my father, was Dr. P.K. Kelka, who was uh, a close friend and uh, colleague of uh, Mr. Kohli. So Mr. Kohli, uh, I was associated with it. You know, I knew about him uh, and about what he was doing uh, right from the early 70s. And of course, it was a dream of every young IIT graduate to join TCS. Uh, somehow I escaped that route. Uh, I got to know Mr. Kohli actually uh, in the late 80s. That's when I was working with Mr. Petroda uh, and Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, the Prime Minister then had asked us to put together a plan for making India a $1 billion software export economy uh, by uh, 1990. Uh, this was, you know, the late mid 80s, late 80s. Uh, it's, it's ludicrous, laughable now, a $1 billion software economy. And uh, that was the first time, uh, software export economy. Now that was the time I first met uh, Mr. Kohli. 
uh, that was the time when we invited uh, Jack Welch uh, and you know the whole GE partnership with India on software export started uh, and that's when I got to know Mr. Kohli uh, and of course you know I would read about him I would listen to him I would meet him and over the years my association with him deepened uh, and he was the most fascinating man. I mean, absolutely fascinating. And um, uh, there was uh, Kohli, the power engineer. There was Kohli, the man who really uh, modernized uh, Tata Electric. Uh, there was um, Mr. Kohli, the man who uh, you know took over TCS, a fledgling TCS in 1969, uh, and gave it new directions. And there was uh, Mr. Kohli, the educator, the man passionately uh, devoted to, to the cause of uh, scientific and technical education, uh, scientific and technical uh, man, man, manpower, uh, building India's human resource capability. And over the years, uh, my conversations with him extended to you know big issues, not just about software, and not just about TCS, but also about you know, how uh, Indian science was doing, Indian technology was doing, and what needs to be done to give it a greater push. Uh, it's very interesting, you know, the, he studied in government college in Lahore, uh, and another great institution builder, a man very much like Mr. Kohli, uh, who was six years his senior at government college Lahore, uh, was Satish Dhawan, whose birth centenary uh, we just uh, celebrated uh, a couple of months ago. Um, uh, sorry, he was four years old to Mr. Kohli, not six. Uh, and uh, both of them, you know, shared uh, many common characteristics. And I saw Professor Dhawan and I saw Mr. Kohli, uh, you know, Mr. Dhawan firmly uh, embedded in India's space program, but having this larger, uh, deeper social commitment, national concern, space is an instrument of uh, nation building. Uh, and here was Mr. Kohli, uh, you know, taking India into the IT hardware era, not very successful there, but certainly taking India into the software uh, world, conquering new frontiers and hugely successful there. But uh, always um, uh, motivated uh, by larger social concerns, applications of, uh, of information technology, and not just, you know, from the point of view of uh, planting flags in overseas markets. And uh, this is what I found remarkable about Mr. Kohli. And the other uh, common characteristic that I found between uh, Satish Dhawan and, uh, uh, and Mr. Kohli, uh, incidentally, there was a third uh, great Indian scientist who studied in government college roughly at about the same time, was Hargobind Khurana, uh, you know, who then got the Nobel Prize uh, in 1968, but then he went away to America. Uh, Mr. Kohli, uh, like uh, Professor Dhawan, was a mentor. Uh, he identified youngsters, he gave them morale, built their morale, he empowered them, he allowed them to function, he built a team. He was not just a charismatic individual. There are numerous charismatic individuals, but one great quality of a charismatic individual should be the ability to build a team, uh, to motivate people, uh, to bring together people of diverse temperaments, diverse talents, uh, this was uh, Mr. Goli's, in my view, greatest contribution. Uh, a mentor, but a mentor who didn't become a tormentor, because there are many mentors, there are many charismatic individuals in India, uh, you know, who claim to be mentors, but they end up becoming tormentors after a while. Uh, Professor Dhawan certainly wasn't one, and Mr. Kohli was certainly not one. So he built a great enterprise. Uh, he built this great institution, TCS, which is pride of the India. But more than building an enterprise, I think he created a whole generation of people, uh, you know, who were inspired by him, who learned from him, who educated uh, by him. And I consider myself very fortunate. Uh, I didn't, uh, you know, have the good fortune or privilege of working with him directly. Uh, but, you know, I, circumstances brought me close to him. Uh, and I continued to be inspired by him, educated by him. Uh, he used to send me uh, notes, uh, you know, till his, till very recently um, uh, on, on various aspects, particularly on education, uh, particularly on making computer literacy uh, available uh, to the less privileged, uh, mass computer literacy, and not just the development uh, of IT, but it was the application of IT. I think that really uh, concerned him. 
uh, he led a full life, he led a rich life, he worked till the very end, almost uh, came to a century, but not quite. Uh, but I think it was a life uh, which enriched um, uh, people around him, it enriched society, it certainly enriched our country. And he will go down, uh, in my view, as one of the makers of modern India. Uh, for what he did at Tata Electric first, uh, what he did um, uh, with uh, TCS, what he did uh, in IIT Kanpur, IIT Bombay, uh, what he did in the College of Engineering in Pune, uh, what he did in various other institutions that he was associated with. So I, I really uh, am delighted uh, to have this opportunity of paying tribute uh, to one of the most remarkable men uh, I have had the good fortune and privilege of meeting uh, in my half a century of public service. Thank you. R. A. Mashelkar, a loved and respected scientist. Uh, to me was uh, a Bhishma Pitamaha. For 40 years I knew him, I looked at him as my guru. You know, I learned so much from him, his amazing optimism, his bold uh, uh, vision. Uh, of course, a lot of people will talk about his being uh, the Bhishma Pitama of uh, uh, IT, but I look at him from a different perspective. Uh, he always told me India had no business to be poor. And he thought of what technology can do for the poor. And you know, that is where he had this grand vision of 250 million illiterates in India become functionally literate. In what time? In five years, not 15 years. That is where he created the computer-based functional literacy, which could have been transformational for India. And I remember Dr. Manmohan Singh, when he was uh, the prime minister in UPA one, uh, I remember my first meeting and he said, Mashankar, I have five years, what can I do? I said, sir, you can make entire India functionally literate within uh, five years. I even remember, I think it was 7 February 2007, I had met Wolf of his, the World Bank president, because they wanted to set up this inclusive innovation agenda. And I remember mentioning to him that 800 million people illiterate with just $2 per person, 1.6 billion, you can make the entire transformation. Unfortunately, it didn't uh, happen. Uh, I remember my last meeting with him, that was uh, in 2015, when he honored us by accepting our honor of a Lifetime Achievement Award and his speech in Balgandara at that time still reverberates in uh, our uh, minds. It was so inspirational being 90 plus at that time. And I remember my saying that, uh, uh, you know, we'll celebrate uh, uh, your century uh, here. And uh, like that great other engineer, uh, Vishweshwaraya, uh, you know, he's only comparable to him. Uh, we will do that uh, celebration in a grand manner. Unfortunately, it was not to be. Uh, all I would say is that uh, he's no more yet he will be everywhere. And why do I say that? Because, uh, you know, individuals go. He was an institution. Institutions remain. And he will remain as an institution, as an inspiration. I'm most grateful that you thought of me, uh, you know, in terms of uh, paying my humble, uh, uh, I would say, uh, pranam to this great legend. Thank you very much. Let's hear from Harish Mehta, longtime colleague from the early NASCOM days. I would like to share one of my cherished memory of working with Mr. Kohli. He was on the he was governor of uh, College of Engineering Pune. I was the director, and so is the technical education secretary. And during that meeting for 10 crore, 11 crore uh, funding for a ladies' hostel, he was pleading to the technical education secretary for a grant. I didn't like the way he spoke. After the meeting was over, I went to Mr. Kohli and said, Kohli sir, you are a CEO of TCS. How can you be pleading to a officer? He looked at me and he said, Harish, what is my name? I said, Mr. F.C. Kohli. Mera naam kya hai? I said, I call you as Kohli sahab. Mera naam kya hai? Then it gave light. Oh, his name is Fakir. He said, for any non-profit work, I have no problem. 
going with a begging ball to anyone. It just showed his humility towards in his personality. It really touched me. Okay, Mr. Kohli's vision always was to uplift the 1.3 billion Indians. Technology should become mainstream with the with these Indians, especially the non-English speaking. Now, at engineering college, for example, he wanted to bring engineering college to an IIT level, and maybe in five years, and develop best practices that can be replicated across many other colleges. So, with a similar, uh, you can same vision, 30 years back when NASCOM was a startup, uh, TCS agreed to join NASCOM. Uh, now, every quarter when the NASCOM report would land in his table. I would expect within two hours of a call from him. And his call would be, of course, telling me what the NASCOM is not doing uh, things right, and what the areas where NASCOM is doing right, and what should be encouraged. But the overall theme always was that how do we get technology become non, uh, also mainstream at the grassroots level uh, in India. He believed very strongly that it is technology that will transform India. We all know Mr. Kohli as passionate, driven, uh, taskmaster, a great doer of IT industry. But my sense is it would not have happened without the support of Mrs. Uh, Soren Kohli. It is her ever smiling face was a rock solid support uh, to Mr. Kohli. Thank you, Soranji. Captain, you will be missed. Thank you for everything. And now, Devjani Ghosh, President NASCOM. You know, someone had once told me that you should live your life in such a way that you touch both the hearts and minds of people. Your legacy is what stays in people's mind. It's how they remember you. It's how they think about you. And what an amazing legacy Mr. Kohli has left behind. I know a lot of people have shared their wonderful stories about Mr. Kohli. I'll take this opportunity to share my little story. I met him for the first time when I had just come back to India. This was 2012. I was receiving an award, my first award in India. And lo and behold, the person on stage giving me the award was Mr. Kohli. My hands were shaking. I was so nervous when I went on stage to receive the award. And I told him, have what an honor it was. I also introduced myself and told him that I'd just come back to India. And um, all he said was, I hope you never leave India again. <laughs> no, Mr. Kohli, I don't think I will ever leave India again. This is home. And you were right. There is so much to do in India. Um, I got to know Mr. Kohli after joining NASCOM. In fact, right after joining NASCOM, we were at a retreat in Sri Lanka and Harish Pai introduced me as the next NASCOM president. He asked me to spend, sit down and spend a few minutes with him. And we spent around 15 minutes talking. And those 15 minutes completely changed the, my perspective of the industry and what NASCOM could do for the industry. Um, he made me realize how important a role IT and our industry can play in changing the world and how important a role NASCOM could play in enabling the change. I hope that whenever he looks down on us, he will feel proud of the work we are doing and the steps we are taking to realize his vision and to realize his dream. I did ask him when I last met him in Varanasi if I was doing an okay job if NASCOM was doing an okay job and he gave me half a smile and said okay and that meant the world to me coming from Mr. Kohli and okay was tremendously encouraging and I I, I was just I was, I was so happy that day. Um, my sincere heartfelt condolences to the family, to his friends, to the entire IT fraternity because we've lost a friend, a guide and a philosopher. But Mr. Kohli has left us with so many memories that he will forever live in our hearts. Thank you very much. And now let's hear it from the other members of the Kohli family. I had a very close and personal relationship with my father. He was my confidant. 
what I will share with you is his impact on me professionally. His professional ascent wasn't a bed of roses. He had to persevere in the face of adversity. From him, I learned that technology leadership, thinking different, what we call innovation and invention, and having a clear, impactful objective are all that matter. And finally, that I must forge my own independent path. I am eternally grateful for every moment we spent together. Thank you. During my formative years, my father was flying all over the world building the software industry. I took a different career path from my dad and brothers. I went into medicine. But as I reflect back, I can see that quietly my dad inculcated all his ideals into me. I'm a strong believer in technology being a problem solver. I'm in medical imaging. Educating and mentoring is my passion. Those were the pillars of human development for my father. He taught me to be ethical, professional, and cajoled me always to try and excel at whatever one did. Above all, the best ideal I think he gave me was his brand of patriotism. In 1951, he came back from the West. When my colleagues were moving to the West in droves, I looked at my dad and saw how content and satisfied he was being back in India. And that was the motivator for me to stay back but it actually brought me an immeasurable benefit. I stayed home with him for 60 years. This meant coming home in the evenings to intense discussions with a very knowledgeable, logical and analytic man. Of course, I had to have a knowledge base and that also he taught me the starting point, read the newspaper cover to cover every day. Thank you, Papa, for your ideals. I will plod on now with the watchful guidance, support, from my dear mother. Before I conclude, I would like to thank on behalf of my dad, Dr. Farooq Udwadia, for looking after him from his first myocardial infarction in 1983, Dr. Sushil Munshi, Dr. Zari Udwadia, Dr. Rohit Barman, who have looked after him medically as well as been dear friends to him. And of course, Bridge Candy Hospital, where he always knew he was at home. I had the privilege of spending large parts of my childhood with my grandfather, Dadu. He always told me that I wasn't his grandson, but rather his sports son. I remember treks in Mabaleshwar, each of us carrying a stick so we could fend off attacking bears. He thought that whoever had eaten the most chicken that day would be the bear's first target, and I was always the one that ate the most chicken. I remember that if I woke up early enough, I could go join this morning walk a marine drive. And I remember countless hours on Air India planes, flying around the world, listening to his stories and playing cards. I've always known he was a giant. I could tell by the way people looked at him. But I'm not gonna speak today about his accomplishments. I'm just gonna speak a little bit about what it was like being his grandson. I think to most, he was a titan of industry, but to me, he was the person that had to wear a bib at the dinner table because of how much food he would always drop on himself. He loved soup, jazz, fruit, and brill cream, and he thought Tiger Balm could heal all maladies. When he got a new gadget, he took time to read the manual cover to cover and he would refuse to turn it on until he did so. Often what that meant was that he kept the manual and I kept the gadget. But I take all of this as his reverence for technology and its potential. He was learning, he was studying, and he was understanding the possibilities. Having so much exposure to someone like him at an early age has an impact. My father last week told me a story of when I was four years old. I went on a trip with Dadu to London, and on that trip, he decided to teach me the importance of time management. I don't remember what he said, but when I came back home, each day I would wake up and make myself a schedule. 
every 30 minutes, a different activity, and I had to follow that schedule at all costs. There were other things I noticed as well. Things that were impossible to ignore even as a child. I noticed how hard and tirelessly he worked and how much he read. I noticed how he never spoke of himself, but only the problems he was trying to solve. I noticed that he valued and genuinely cared for people, that he was generous and that he never carried any judgment. He was the most optimistic person I've ever met. And he taught me that there is no ceiling to what can be accomplished. He also taught me that personal success only means so much if you're not lifting up others around you. I will miss his smile and the warmth that he always had for me. Thank you, Dadu, for clearing the path and showing me the way. I will take it from here. There are so many things I could say about Dadu, so many stories to tell, so many things I wish I could convey. But the thing that stands out the most whenever I think about him is the word precious. Especially the last few years, whenever we talked, even if it was just for a quick phone call, he never missed an opportunity to tell me how precious I and the whole family was to him. Family to him was the most important thing, motivating his successes and making them all worthwhile. He treasured us and made sure we knew it. He always made clear that he would be there for us. And as much as he valued and treasured his family, we have treasured and valued him in return and followed his example. Dadu, you are precious. Thank you so much for all of your love, all of your support, and for the wonderful family that you and Dadi have built. I love you so much. Papa was a man of a few words, and those words he showed me a wonderful side of him. His humanistic qualities of kindness, compassion, and warmth were seen in his interactions with myself and others. He took pride and joy in my career and my marriage to Sanjay. He was a supportive husband to my mother-in-law. He loved her and always wanted the best for her. His love for her is a great testimony of marriage and relationships. He was expressive in his ideas and strategic when he implemented them. He loved classical music and was a very considerate man. His presence will be missed, but he will always be in my heart and mind. It's hard for me to wrap my head around the impact that he had on India and the rest of the world, because for me, he was Dadu. I have many great memories and I learned a lot of important lessons from him. The most important thing he showed me was how much he cared about others. When spending time and talking with family, he never failed to let us know how much it meant to him and how much we were loved. He embodied that spirit in his work as well. He wanted to make sure others could always reach their full potential and worked hard to make sure that they had that opportunity. He taught me to make sure that the people close to me knew that they were important to me and I will carry that spirit forward for the rest of my life. I love you, Dr. There are many accolade-laden appellations that apply to Fakir Chand Kohli. We've heard many of these. The father of the Indian software industry, a visionary leader, these are all no doubt true, but the one I cherish is Papa. I am his daughter-in-law, but he always put the emphasis on daughter. He embraced me within the family with love and affection. Anyone who knew him well realized that behind his stern facade, he was generous to a fault, trusting in the innate goodness of people and devoted to his family. His wife and he were equal partners and the source of strength for each other. For us, his children, he always guided and supported us 
and saw us through various twists and turns our lives took. His grandchildren were in a special category. He doted on them. They were each the apple of his eye and could do no wrong. He indulged and spoiled them and I think they are all the better for that. Papa, I will miss our discussions on wide-ranging topics. You never fail to astound me with your vast array of knowledge and your incisive analysis. I always came away smarter and wiser. He was so appreciative of small gestures, like a phone call, an offer of tea, which, yes, yes, I know you liked light. As long as you had your fruit, your gustatory needs were easy to satisfy. Papa, I am blessed for having known you. You have enriched my life though you may no longer be here in corporeal form. Your spirit will always guide and inspire me. I love you. I was my daughter's sweetie pie. He was a protector and looked after all of us. I will miss my daughter very much and he will be with me forever. Papa, he was unique. Living with him for 30 years of my married life, I learned more than any book can teach. As a young daughter-in-law, while I was overawed, Papa was always approachable. He loved fruit, which he always cut for himself, and looked forward to his golf mornings and made his own tea before he set off. The newspaper was a must for Papa every morning. And I was amazed that every chronicle was read from page to page in the Kohli household by my in-laws and my husband Anirudh, a Kohli tradition, the only one that I haven't yet imbibed. The New York Times was his Sunday favorite and he would often open the medical page and ask me to read it. So exhaustive was his passion to read and imbibe. He would always comment on colors and logos on t-shirts with his wry sense of humor. At our home, the dining table was always the hot spot for fiery discussions. And while I was overwhelmed, I also learned to become a free thinker. Our home has seen some of the most elegant parties, good conversations, music, and all my in-laws friends. And the table was always full of home-cooked house specialities specially curated by my mother-in-law from course to course. She took great pride in always making the food herself. And Papa took equal pride in only having a home party with home-cooked food. That was another Kohli tradition. Milestone events were always grand. They were meticulously planned and for that time we also had destinations that were chartered and after the event it was always followed by a personalized handwritten letter to each guest. Papa adored Mama. She was his lifeline. He loved her beauty. He loved her sense of style and abilities. He was a great fan of Mama. They are made for each other and matched each other in their zest for life and are a sterling example of steadfast devotion. Once I started my career, I, what struck me was a strong sense of independence and self-reliance. I noticed how he could use all available resources at hand and was a game changer. Just watching him, I imbibed a strong sense of discipline in whatever you do and an equally strong sense of giving your best and more to your profession. He always took great pride and interest in my career and encouraged me, like so many other women, to be independent. He always said that you must learn and teach selflessly. I've never met someone more grounded than my father-in-law. 
When I think back of every story of his journey that he shared with us, it was an inspiration for me. Living legends leave behind a legacy. Our best tribute is to live his legacy of passion, commitment, and most of all, compassion, kindness, and humility. Dearest Papa, we will miss you. Fakir and I were introduced to each other by our parents. We had a long six months engagement because I was completing my legal career. I had to complete my law degree. I had six months to go. During this period, because Fakir was in Lonavla and I was in My father encouraged that we could write to each other, which was, I think, in 1952, it was a great thing. The parents encouraging you, who have, we hadn't met much earlier, did not know each other. Through these letters, we came to know each other very well, and we also fell in love. My in-laws were much older, as Skir was very born to them, and orthodox. But we had a beautiful relationship with my in-laws. We had a lot of closeness. That helped a lot in Fakir's and my relationship also because his family was very close to me. We have been married for 68 years. Relationship. Of course, we've had differences. But we were soon, we would make up and understand each other's point of view and what was the difference. Thereby we became much better friends. At times it was very extremely touching. Fakir would say, let me touch your feet. It was wrong of me and what all I said and did. I must ask for your forgiveness. So I would say, come on, don't be so funny. If we are going to have such a goody-goody relationship, then it will not be a real friends or husband-wife relationship. He was a gracious man. He would say a lot of things which I didn't deserve. He would say, if I go out in the daytime with a candle looking for somebody like you, I'd never find one. I would not find one like you at all. So I must write a letter to God to thank Him for you. In my family, no one, he would say, no one lived beyond 80. And now you are taking me beyond 90s and to 94. About his humanness, there was no distinction in the status of people. Uh, whoever were all his staff members. He was very close, no matter what status they were. They, he would always inquire about their families. He would remember the names of the children. And the children were very dear to him, whether they were drivers, whether they were workers, or whether they were officers. He took a keen interest in their studies, work, and careers. We always attended the personal functions of the staff, whether we attended others or not. But the staff, we made it sure that we must attend their personal functions. Once we went to attend a wedding of one of the workers of TCS. While coming back, our driver was very upset. He scolded me, saying, How could you attend the wedding of a chamar? Chamar ki shadi pe gayo? So Fakir was very upset with him and said, Is he not a human being? Is his family not created by God? How, how is he different than all of us? Till today, the driver's children come, communicate with us and visit us. Now it is going to be very difficult and lonely. 
I don't know how I will go on. Though I have a fantastic caring family. But Fakir, I will miss you. I will miss you all the time. And I'll be lost without you. Thank you. Havans have been an age-old tradition at the Kohli household. We always perform a Havan for a special occasion. Today, I will chant the Gayatri Mantra as ours is an Arya Samaji home and we always start with the Gayatri Mantra. Om Bhur Bhuvatswaha Tatsya Vitur Varenyam Bhargo Devatsya Dhimai Dhyoyona Prachodaya Om Bhur Bhuvatswaha Tatsya Vitur Varenyam Bhargo Devatsya Dhimai Dhyoyona Prachodaya Om Bhur Bhuvatswaha Tatsya Vitur Varenyam Bhargo Devatsya Dhimai Dhyoyona Prachodaya Om Shanti 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 We are very grateful for all of you to come. Thank you very much for joining us. Namaskar. <laughs>